mix. We want to be with our friends and our family, but in, we're living through unprecedented times, and this is a global pandemic and a global issue, and it obviously has a massive impact on our lives and uh, has a huge impact on uh, the financial markets as well, which we're going to uh, run through uh, today. A few slides uh, to get going. Uh, and then we'll do some live analysis on the uh, live markets as the uh, key news breaks today. It's all about the U.S. unemployment, uh, the uh, not the unemployment number, but the actual uh, jobless claims. So uh, let's uh, let's see how we uh, how we get on. So uh, say welcome everyone. Uh, any questions, any comments, please uh, put them in the uh, in the notes below. We appreciate that. Uh, good ones and bad ones, obviously. We only improve with the, with our uh, feedback from our customers, and uh, the customer is always right, of course. So um, I'll say a few slides just to get going. Uh, trading and the COVID nineteen crisis. Obviously, I won't um, I won't go on about the uh, the numbers of people that's infect uh, that's impacted, but obviously this is a global uh, tragedy that's uh, affecting all of us, uh, no matter where we are in the world. So take care, everyone. Uh, so, uh, just obviously a disclaimer before we get going. The material here is a provided as a general marketing communication. Don't forget, uh, it's for information purposes only and does not constitute independent investment research. Nothing in this communication contains or should be considered investment re re uh, investment advice or investment recommendation or indeed a solicitation for the purpose of buying or selling of any financial instrument. All information provided is gathered from reputable sources, and any indication of past performance is not a guarantee or reliable indicator of future performance. Users acknowledge that any investment in Forex and CFD product is characterized by a certain degree of uncertainty and then in any investment of this nature involves a high level of risk for which the users are solely responsible and liable. We assume no liability for any loss arising from any investment made based on the information provided in this communication. And, provided this communi and finally, this communication has not been reduced or further distributed with our prior written permission. So... Uh, this is me. My background is in uh, the city of London. I've worked for uh, uh, retail banks, investment banks. Um, I mean, and uh, my approach is all very much about understanding yourself, uh, looking at probability, simplicity, and uh, multiple time frames. That's my approach to market analysis. Uh, so today we're going to look at the obviously the final quarter. Uh, what's uh, the quarter that's just finished? Um, market lockdown or, or lockdown and market volatility. Uh, people even talking about markets shutting down. I think that's very, very unlikely. Um, but uh, anyway, more on that in a minute. What limit up and limit down means we've experienced it a few times uh, in this final quarter uh, that's just completed very, very uh, extreme market volatility. Uh, some strategies, trend following mean reversion strategies. We'll have a look at those um, as well uh, later on uh, as the news breaks. Um, and some live analysis on the uh, weekly jobs claims as the number come as the numbers come out as well. So obviously, any questions, uh, put them in, uh, below, and uh, we'll get back to you as soon as we can. So uh, welcome everybody. Take care. Hope you can all hear me loud and clear. Uh, so uh, let's just keep going. So lockdown and markets is what I've titled this as. So really, uh, obviously. The, the, the world is in lockdown, basically. We have this global lockdown now. Billions of people around the world uh, confined or by many governments uh, trying to keep people in the house because it's you know contact with humans that's uh, causing the spread of this thing. Uh, and uh, we, we, we'll get into the bottom of the epidemi epidemiology of it. Uh, the the uh, medics are working very, very hard on finding uh, a solution to this thing. Uh, but it's obviously going to go on for a few more weeks. And uh, a few more months as well. Uh, Adnan, thank you for your kind comments. I uh, hope you can hear me loud and clear. Uh, so what has been the upshot as far as, as far as financial markets are concerned? Well, it's volatility. It's been incredibly, incredibly volatile the first quarter. We started, uh, you know, back in uh, the beginning of the year uh, with, a, you know, we had that we had the issues between Iran and the US. We had oil prices spiking. We had the dollar rallying. Um, uh, we had all that uh, worry, and then we sort of calmed down. Uh, things calmed down January uh, through to February, uh, even though we uh, the, 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 this uh, thing, COVID-19, as it became called, or the coronavirus novella crisis, uh, was aware it was growing in uh, in Japan through uh, sorry in China uh, through uh, Wuhan. Um, but you know the, the West and developed economies were. Uh, were uh, perhaps late to respond, um, but here we are. Here we are now. So we've had 
as far as stock markets are concerned, or the um, everybody understands that perhaps the stock markets it, it, it more simply than perhaps some of the other commodity markets and some of the far, finance um, uh, treasury markets or the uh, forex markets. But because um, we all seem to have you know investments in pension funds, and uh, everybody understands you know companies like Apple and uh, Samsung and uh, and what have you but f it's been the worst quarter uh, since 1987 since the big uh, shock of 1987 we had that black monday back in october 87 i remember that as very well as myself as well so the usa 30 or the dow jones industrial average fell 20 over 23 percent uh between the 1st of january and the 31st of march the uk FTSE 100 or the uk 100 fell uh over 24 percent down so a quarter of the asset, a quarter of the value of, the, of that stock market was wiped out in the space of three months. Uh, all the gains for 2019 were wiped out in the space of that, uh, that, that very, very, very volatile three months. And it's it's not just affecting the developed markets. It, it, it's In fact, it's impacting the emerging markets more uh, than the uh, developed markets. Some of, uh, some of the currencies in particular, the emerging market currencies like the uh, some of the Asian currencies, the South African rand, uh, Turkish lira, all underperforming significantly. Lost these sort of figures against the US dollar, twenty odd percent each of them. Uh, global growth, so the, the economy, the global economy itself. Uh, IHS market last week said uh, they expected the global growth of the economy of the globe of the globe to actually contract minus two point eight percent for twenty twenty, and this is going to ripple certainly out throughout. Uh, 2020 um, and a global recession is, is upon us. Uh, recession is um, is uh, tabled as a decline uh, in two consecutive quarters uh, of GDP in any uh, global economy. A depression, which is the next step on, which everybody he 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 hates hails back to the 1929 uh, Wall Street crash when uh, the US went into recession for about four or five years. That needs a 10% decline in GDP uh, for, a, de for a, a recession to become a depression. Uh, the D word has been bounded around in the uh, financial press uh, over the uh, over March, as you might expect. Uh, but that's very unlikely. We got we're definitely looking like we've got a global recession. Very, very unlikely we'll get a depression uh, into 20. 20 2021 but who knows nobody really knows uh nobody's really got a crystal ball to tell us what's going to go on uh one analyst i read uh last week uh he's talking about u.s unemployment rising to 32 percent i can't remember the um which one it was but um i should have put a a, 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 a uh, a reference to that, obviously, but uh, the, I mean, the point is basically these big numbers are getting talked about now. Remember, U.S. unemployment rate has been one of uh, uh, the, the U.S.'s big, big winners over. And it's not just over the Trump period. It, it, it's come down very aggressively uh, during um Obama's uh, premiership as well after the big financial crash crash of uh, 2007 2009 um so it's been you know it's under 4% 3. odd percent it was 50 60 year lows the US unemployment big big uh, positive tick in the box for the US economy and now we're talking about it rocketing to 32% and to, uh, and last week we had this massive massive rise this record rise of 3. Point, um nearly 3.3 million U.S. workers applying for um, uh, claims, U.S. unemployment claims for the first time last week, and it's expected this week to rocket to 3.7 million. That's out in about 20 minutes. Big key number. The market's already obviously priced in this very, very depressed uh, number. And uh, Goldman Sachs yesterday, and it was reported this morning, it talked about it even reaching 6 million today. So uh, very, very uh, key day. And then obviously tomorrow, as far as trades are concerned, we got the, uh, the the monthly what is normally the most volatile event of the of the month, the uh, non farm payroll, and um, uh, we'll see what that how that comes out um, tomorrow. Yesterday, the ADP number, which normally is a fairly a uh, good predictor of the uh, non-farm payroll uh, came out much better than expected. It was only down about 27,000. It was supposed to be hundreds of thousands down, but we'll see how it all goes. Really, the economic data at the moment, all the backward-looking economic data that's all, that's kept being captured before the coronavirus really took a grip of the global economy, and particularly the, the Western developed economies, uh, is somewhat irrelevant. It's all about marks are now being driven by the sentiment and the direction 
particularly that these Western developed economies are, are dealing with. And in particular, obviously, the United States of America. There's the old adage in markets that uh, the US sneezes and uh, we all get a cold. And that's, you know, uh, people ask me why I bang on about uh, the US economy all the time, the dollar and Donald Trump. And it's because it's the most influential thing that affects markets, all markets, whatever you trade, whether you're, you're an equity trader, a commodity trader, forex trader, uh, what goes on in the USA affects us all. And uh, that's why um, we're so focused or, uh, uh, yeah, you know, the, the US gets perhaps more than it's the, the, uh, the attention it deserves. But that is unfortunately how the market is. And that's uh, what happens. You know, markets do three things. They go up, they go down, they go sideways. And that's all they do. Um, and so if the biggest influence on it uh, is the United States, we need to know uh, and understand what's going on in the United States. So US unemployment to rise to 32% would be, uh, you know, a very, very uh, serious issue. Just on that point, interestingly, the United States are dealing with it in a different uh, way to the uh, the rest of the world. Uh, many parts of the uh, world in Europe and UK in particular are looking to try and pay companies to retain their staff, whereas in the US, they've taken a different approach. They're looking at sort of, well, release your staff and, and hopefully you'll be able to recruit them back later on in the year when the economy picks up, if the economy does pick up. But again, there's lots of uh, lots of talk about uh, that being a much longer uh, recovery than first imagined. Because when this first broke in China, the expect expectation was like a V-shaped um, uh, downturns. We went down very quickly, but we bounced back up very quickly. Now we're talking about, or oh, most market participants are talking about this, you know, a U shape sort of recovery. So we go down still as quickly, but we flat, we go along the bottom a while before we uh, turn up. And how long we're, we're flattening or going down or U shape it is yet to be decided, or yet, you know, only time will tell and um, history will, will, will prove what sort of recovery there is, if there indeed there is a recovery, I'm sure there will be, uh, simply because, uh, you know, markets are very re resilient. And before all this happened, remember, you know, the, U the, the uh, US economy was looking relatively robust. We are in an election year. Um, every election year, the incumbent president tends to get re-elected. You know, it's just the, the, the nature of things. So love him or hate him. Uh, Mr. Trump was likely to get re-elected, regardless of perhaps who the... Um, the Democrats put up. But anyway, that might all change. Who knows? Nothing's a given. Um, uh, and the economy is doing quite well. You know, he was talking about cutting uh, taxes in this first quarter to encourage people uh, to you know, put uh, money in people's pockets. That was obviously encouraged them to perhaps vote for him uh, in November, later in the year. Uh, that's obviously all changed now. Um, uh, but obviously, they may, again, he may come back to be able to do that. So, uh, uh, we'll see. So thank you, everyone, for being here. Uh, I don't know if I can put you – I don't think I can put your comments up like I can uh, – or can I? No, I can't because this is – oh, can I? Oh, yes, I can. There we go. There we are. Hello, Mahmoud. Um, uh, Mohammed, sorry. I hope you're well. Manzor, hope well. Thank you for being here, guys. Uh, Ahmed, thank you for being here, sir. Um, there we go. Obviously, guys, any questions about markets, uh, obviously, uh, let me know. If you want to look at some particular uh, assets, let me have a look. Uh, let me know. We'll go through those later on. But I just want to run through a few, run through a few slides. Hello, Mr. FX Home. I don't know. Do I know you? Yeah, I must know you. But uh, welcome. Thank you for your time. Take care, all of you. Obviously, everybody, take care, and thanks for joining us. So, uh, yes, that's just some of the bullet points. You know, the rest of it, it's uh, some few where you know. It, Early, earlier in March, I pulled this up as well. You know, GDP prediction for the second quarter. So we've had this hideous first quarter. Uh, the big banks in the US are looking at these sort of reductions for the second quarter uh, of um, of 20, uh, nine, uh, 2020, a 30% reduction for Q2 uh, from Morgan Stanley. Uh, Morgan Stanley uh, tend to be uh, pretty good at uh, uh, the equity market sides of things, uh, of, the, of the big banks. They, they, they tend to be, you know, one or two of the top five or six banks in the world when it comes to, although not necessarily the biggest, uh, when it comes to equity market performance. So uh, there we go. Uh, the other chart I've got down here, I'm sure a lot of you are aware of it, the VIX. This is the volatility index, the the VIX uh, for the equity options of the uh, S&P 500. Uh, and typically it's down here at, you know, under 20, 15 sort of level. Uh, we've rocketed to unprecedented levels, unprecedented levels of volatility. All, all the uncertainty creates more uh, more doubt. Markets hate 
uncertainty more than anything else in the world. Uh, and as the uncertainty rocketed during March, so the volatility index rocketed from to, from these you know unprecedented levels. If somebody had asked me even you know four months ago uh, if we could see the VIX at 80, I'd have said not in my lifetime, not in my trading uh, career. No, absolutely not. No way. Uh, with a pretty 90% certainty, as you can say these things, but you know, you can never be 90% certain. Uh, and this has just proved uh, what uh, uh, the situation lots and lots of uncertainty, incredible amount of volatility. Uh, we've cooled very significantly, we cooled down to the sort of 50 level, but even 50 is way, way, way above any sort of uh, normal uh, participation uh, and. and um, volatility in the markets um right some questions coming in let me to ask, answer them as they come in i think basim's asking uh what would uh what would be the effect of italy leaving the european union that's a very good question yeah what would be the effect of italy leaving the european uh, union well it obviously would weaken um it, it'd be a huge step uh for italy it would weaken the european union you know they've gone from 28 to 27 with the uk leaving Actually, let me move your question, um, uh, Basim, if you don't mind. Um, simply because you know, obviously, uh, they're a big economy, uh, the fourth biggest economy in Europe, uh, and uh, obviously the budget would go down, all that sort of thing. So it would weaken the whole mandate. Whether that actually happens or not is obviously a big, big, big question and wouldn't happen immediately, wouldn't happen instantly. Uh, Italy it, itself uh, is relying on the EU to perhaps uh, prop it up uh, given the the state of the the very weakness of the Italian economy, the coalition, the very strong right wing nationalist coalition within um, within the current government is sort of fragmenting and, and, and fracturing to an extent. Uh, but it's a very very volatile situation. Obviously, Italy is at the forefront of the migration issue as well. That, that you know. Um, uh, within the EU as well, need some support there. But economically, very struggling significantly. And then, bang, it's had the biggest impact. You know, unfortunately, the highest death rate concentrated in Lombardia, the key financial capital of Milan, um, uh, the, the three, uh, the triangle of uh, big cities in the north of uh, Italy there uh, the, for manufacturing as well as finance and services and obviously the fashion industry, the car industry, uh, lots and lots of uh, global well-known uh, industries set in northern Italy. Uh, and so it's had a huge impact. So that might, you know, might then raise the uh, cry for Italy to leave the EU. Who knows after this? But at the moment, I think, you know, people's uh, focus in government's focus, energy, financial markets focus as well is getting through this crisis as 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 a, as, a, as, a, as an individual country initially, but as a global eco as a global economy and a global community, really, uh, in the, is my personal take on. But again, that's just my own personal uh, view on that, uh, Basim. Uh, but yes, it would be obviously another significant blow to the EU if Italy did vote to leave. Um, big, big decision. Um, uh, Edwin, we'll come. To, I'll make a note of that euro dollar on the four-hour time. We'll, we'll come. We'll come on to that. Yes, basically the uh, the trend remains sort of down for euro dollar. Uh, I was looking at that today. It was like one hundred seven, wasn't it? One hundred eight fifty on just on Tuesday. But we've continued. Uh, sorry, one hundred nine. Uh, we continue to to move down. Uh, one ten was given up, and then one oh nine. But we'll come, we'll have a look at that at the four hour time frame, Edwin. So I won't forget. Okay, uh, let me just make a quick note of that. So Euro USD four hour. Just when we finish these slides, Edwin, if you don't mind. Uh, Arthur, that's not a problem, sir. We're here to help. Okay, <laughs> absolutely here to help. That's part of my job. Okay. Um, uh, oil will it keep going down? Well, I've got to, I've done talk for uh, quite a while on the oil market. Um, of Lafo. we'll come back to that as well. US oil, yes, is the issue. I've just seen a note now, uh, saying that one of the big African uh, storage facilities uh, for oil is virtually full. One of the key key support areas. Remember, we've got this. Um, we've got this perfect storm uh, of the oil market. We've got the three biggest producers in the world. So that Saudi Arabia, Russia, and to an extent, the United States not getting on, particularly the Saudis and the Russians have fallen out big time. OPEC plus has fallen apart. They were trying to negotiate a, a, a cap on production. They were talking about 600,000 barrels a day, a million barrels, 1.2 million barrels it went to. Russia said no, and the whole thing sort of fell apart. Even OPEC couldn't keep itself together. So the whole thing fell apart. Uh, the Saudis suddenly threw their toys out of the cot and said, right, well, we're going to cut prices over a weekend. They did that. 
Uh, prices fell then as they cut prices of their key uh, suppliers, uh, key customers, sorry. And uh, it's, it's and they're a big standoff. Uh, oil rallied today $2 from tw uh, yesterday. I was saying to the, uh, the guys in the office today, uh, yesterday, uh, US oil traded under $20 for six or seven individual hours of the trading day, which is always a sign that, you know, is this a floor? Is this a floor or are we trying to go lower? Earlier in the week, there'd been a report that um, U.S. oil in Texas, a particular grade of the uh, WTI, was changing, exchanging hands at $7 a barrel within the United States. $7 a barrel. You know, whether that was true or not, it gets reported, it gets spooked out. It was from a fairly reliable resource source. So you would suggest that, you know, that the price, the pressure is still going down. And again, we'll have a look at the charts uh, in a minute when we finish a few of these slides and uh, we can go through it. But yes, the pressure remains to the downside. The bounce up today has been on reports that um, uh, Mr. Trump said um, uh, that uh, he's, uh, he, well, he, a while ago, he said he was willing to, to mediate between Saudi and Russia. And this morning, he said, or late last night, he said that uh, he thought the Russians and the Saudis will get together, will come up with some sort of deal. It's, it's a very Trump-esque sort of phrase that tends to Sort of, sort of come to fruition most of the time, but not all the time. Uh, so, uh, and then the Saudis over uh, this morning said uh, they were, uh, you know, pre not prepared to do a deal, but uh, that you know, obviously we uh, talk in very in positive terms. Uh, that, uh, but pointing again, re-emphasizing re re that the problem is the Russians. Uh, the Russians aren't going to like that clearly. Uh, so, uh, where we go from here? only knows. But $20 a barrel is no good for any of those, these three big supplies or any of the other supplies either. Uh, the Permian Basin, where all the shale oil producers uh, produce the US oil, which got US to the you know number one oil producer in the world, this uh, shale oil production, they need um, the, 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 their break-in is around about $40 a barrel. So at $20 a barrel, $10 a barrel, uh, it's seven dollars a barrel. If it was actually true, this exchange and this deal uh, is not. You know, they're losing lots and lots of money on each barrel that's produced, so uh, they can't survive long. The Saudis are the ones that could probably survive the longest with these low oil prices, but it's in nobody's interest for it to be all the way down here. Uh, not really, even in the global economy's interest, because uh, I know a very very low oil price can tip. You know things into you know price collapses deflation uh, rather than and stagflation or stagflation and deflation and you know uh, the things we talked about before recession and depression so uh, a very low oil price is obviously very um, you know you might think it's good for your, your petrol price if you're you know you're buying diesel and petrol for your cars and uh, buses and what have you and uh, um, flying around in aeroplanes but obviously nobody's doing that at the moment so uh, yeah it's uh, it's a big issue but we'll come to the charts as well so no problem um, I assume that's not a problem. Uh, gold, uh, we'll look at gold as well. Gold's, uh, you know, it's the key safe haven. Uh, it's moving around a wee bit at the moment, as it does uh, all the time. Uh, but FX Home will come to gold as well. So gold, and obviously, guys, anything else you want, please put it in. Um, um, Femi's asking, please, can you explain more on lot size? Lot size, certainly. We'll have a look at lot size. Lot size is key. You've got to understand what it means. And somewhere the um, you know the decimal point is and the difference between you know a full lot and a micro lot is a hundred times difference. So you know it's a hundred times more risk uh, trading a full lot compared to a micro lot or a mini lot. Still ten times more risky, and you've got to really understand your margin and your leverage. Uh, Femi, watch the video, the basic introduction video we got on our website. Um, but lot size is absolutely fundamental. Many, many, most people, lots of people, it's not just you. Uh, thank you for asking the question. Lots of people get lot size wrong or they make a mistake when they're, sometimes when you're actually trading because that's one of the risks of trading. You know, they, they press 1.0 and they're meant to press 0 0.01 and they've actually put and all of a sudden they've got 100 times more risk on the table. Obviously, get out of that trade very quickly. We do that sort of thing. Uh, Femi, uh, sorry, FXO. Uh, um, uh, price goes around 1600. Yeah, it's sort of there's a key resistance. I'll, I'll come and I'll show you on my charts where that key resistance is. There's some technical levels as well as this big psychological 1600 level with some key uh, Fibonacci levels as well, which is a key indicator I like to use as well. So, uh, anyway, thank you for your questions, guys. Keep them coming in. We'll uh, we'll have a look at all of those as we go through.
things. Uh, so let me just finish a few of these slides. It was I was going to talk about the uh, the COVID nineteen and the impact on uh, on trading. So the, I'd say I'm, the main one is this VIX index. So everybody keeps comparing it to the financial crash of twenty nineteen, which is still you know a relative short time away in uh, as far as financial markets are concerned. But look here, even then it, it only went to sixty, and today as I say that uh, we went all the way to eighty three. Uh, the, the 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 complete panic in the market. Um, that should say, but but this this you know one of the days in in March. I can't remember which day it was now. It was the I think it wasn't last week. It was the week before. I've written last week here, but I think it was the week before. Uh, it, it, no, I think it was wasn't it? It was the last week of, of of March. We had this massive lots of volatility on the uh, on the equity markets. The S and P five hundred or the USA five hundred, as we call it in our. Our, C, our derivative product. Uh, one day it rallied. You know, it'd been falling and falling and falling. Twenty-eight days now, we've been down under a key twenty-day moving average. We've been falling, falling. Uh, big fall one day, nine percent. That's unheard of. You know, it's normally moving about one less than one percent. Uh, but uh, uh, Dunku, good afternoon, T.C. Oh, good evening. I um, hope you're well. Uh, so yeah, volatility even in the height of the financial crisis only only right to sixteen. Here we are, another you know thirty percent higher again at eighty three, eighty three. So as I was saying, you know, one day last week the foot the S and P fell nine percent. The following day it bounced and rallied twelve percent. Uh, sorry, it rallied nine percent and only to fall twelve percent. So huge, huge volatility, and it's it's times like this uh, when you really need to have really strict risk management. You know, sometimes, you know, people say stay out of the market, keep your cash uh, and wait for you know things to settle. Uh, but volatility, you know, sometimes is all you need as a trader to you don't care whether it's going up or going down. Obviously, long term uh, buyers of stock expect or want markets to go up. Uh, traders can benefit from both uh, markets moving up and markets moving down. So, uh, um it's uh, really, really what's all going on in the market. So that's a, you know, volat VIX. Uh, you can trade it with us as, as a futures contract, VIX.F. Uh, very, very, and it moves around a lot as well. It's a really good uh, um, uh, index to actually trade as well. Moves around a lot. I've been wanting that for a while. We've now got it. Uh, thanks for your time. Can you please give more insight on how to trade big movements on any pair, mostly the day time frame? Ben, we'll come to the daily time frame. You mean the end of day? Absolutely. That's my preferred time frame. Many, many traders uh, trade the end of day time frame. You know, they're, they're full time workers. They come in at the end of their work, whatever they're doing, see what's happened in the market and on their day, wherever they are in the world, and make a decision what to do the next day, put a trade on or don't put a trade on, go off to work and have their stop loss, have their take profit and see what happens. You hold it, you know. Anyway, we'll come on to that as well. Uh, ben, don't worry. Sorry, that was uh, end of day for Ben. Lot size, gold, oil and the euro, dollar, four hour. That's the only ones we've got at the moment. Um, Tony, Good afternoon to you, sir. Hope you're well. Or oh, good day. I don't know where you are in the world, to be honest. Uh, so I say good evening, good day, wherever you are. Good morning. If you're, uh, you're just getting up in uh, early days of uh, uh, North America or Latin America, wherever you are. Uh, where was I? Right. Let's just uh, half an hour. Let, uh, the news will be out in a minute. So let's uh, get the box. Right. So the, this concept of limit up, limit down, it's something that the exchanges, particularly the for the uh, equity exchanges, the options exchanges and the futures exchanges, particularly the equity exchanges put in about giving a calm to the market. So if a market opened or moved down 7% from the close of the previous day, markets close for 15 minutes. And this happened three or four times in March in the S&P 500, in the Dow, in the NASDAQ, all the major US uh, equity markets all suffered uh, uh, limit down uh, circuit breakers breaking, so again, it cools the market for 15 minutes. The next move down, the second le lever or circuit breaker, sits at 13%. So again, if a market moved 13% uh, from the previous day's close down uh, or up to an extent, they, the market closes for 15 minutes, lets markets close down. And this happens when obviously that there's imbalance. A market, any market, whether it's you're selling tomatoes, apples, foreign exchange or, you know, glasses of water, um, 
you know, it's a it, as a buyer and a seller. And if there's no money, if there's no buyers, the price goes down until people start buying. If there's no sellers, the price goes up till people start selling to get the product back in the market. And that's all it is. And, and brokers like uh, like us just put buyers and sellers together. But if everybody's on one side of the trade, there's no trade to ha to be had. There's no agreement. So things stop. So this is what these circuit breakers are and just sort of cool the markets. Have we gone down too far? And what happened many times is that, you know, it moved down 7%. It closed uh, on a few of the days and then it continued to go down. Never went to 13%. We never got to 13% down and we certainly didn't get to 20%. If we move down to, tw if we have a 20% move in any one trading session, the market is closed for the day. That's it. Close your books, go home. This started triggering. When these started triggering uh, last month in March, this started triggering the talk and the gossip in the marketplace that, that you know, the the the, the people, the, the they, whoever they are, the governments, uh, institutions, regulators, might actually close the markets down. I really don't see that happening, to be honest. Uh, it, I mean, it has happened in the past, don't get me wrong, um, but uh, there was talk of reducing trading hours. And sometimes there's two sides of that coin, you know, by reducing the hours, uh, it compresses the volatility or it compresses all the action. People want to get in and out even more quickly. Uh, but no, I don't think that's really, really going to happen. And these circuit breakers have worked, uh, very well, uh, the, uh, the, both on the futures market and on the cash market. So, uh, everything's, you know, it's okay at the moment. It survived. Mar Have we got worse to come? Well, we don't know. Nobody knows. That's the whole point of trading. We don't know what the future is going to hold. Uh, but uh, March was certainly bad. Now, I mean, from a positive point of view, going back to the actual crisis or the virus itself, uh, there seems to be a, a an acceptance now uh, within the US administration, which is what I'd been saying. Uh, you've been listening to me uh, sort of six weeks or so ago. The issue with the market is it was it, because of the United States, there, there was no clear direct, or the market was worried about the direction the US was taking. It appeared to be this is what was causing some of the volatility and a lot of the volatility in the market, in my opinion, uh, that uh, the, there wasn't any clear direction that the, the, the president himself was a bit dismissive of, of the whole uh, virus, uh, the uh, the impact of it. Uh, just six weeks ago, I remember seeing a tweet uh, looking uh, just yesterday from the 24th of February saying there had only been five cases in the United States then and uh, th uh, three or four of them were, were recovering. And he, he said at the, I think it was a press conference as well, as well as a tweet, you know, we, we're going down to one. Uh, we're very much on con in control of this. We're on top of it. And here we are six weeks later, there's 5,000 Americans dead. Uh, they're expecting, you know, it go to possibly 200,000 plus. And uh, the, the uh, New York is in, uh, well, it's not in a lockdown. Uh, it's it, uh, it, it's not, not in a curfew yet, but there's, uh, you know, New York is the center of the epicenter of things globally now, as well as in the United States, New York City and New York State. And it's spreading very, very quickly. And it's going exponentially as this disease does, you know. Um, so, Physical distance. I don't like people calling it social distance. It's physical distance. Keep your physical distance from somebody. It can only be spread by uh, droplets in the air. You know, there's all also all loads of fake stuff going around. You know, uh, taking lemon, drinking citrus juice prevents you from getting it. No, it doesn't. <laughs> uh, it's it's a virus. It's spread by um, water droplets from person to person. It's spread because people move it around. Uh, that's why it spreads around. It doesn't spread itself. It's it's people spread it around. Anyway, uh, uh, let me get. I'm getting off the point. But anyway, be careful. And the reason we've had this volatility is because the you know. And now the Americans seem to be taking it much more seriously. He was very presidential on Tuesday night uh, at his press conference. Very serious. Uh, Dr. Fauci, the head medical guy, is uh, very very well regarded globally, and you know has great um, authority and respect in the U.S. Uh, and, um, you know, he's talking about these big, big numbers. So uh, the, the Americans have the money to get on with it. They've thrown $5 trillion at it so far, and more will be uh, perhaps needed. Um, so there we go. That's that's the impact. Uh, we'll have, have a look at these different strategies, but, you know, strategies are down to really you. You trade the time frame, the trade the strategy that fits your personality. I say this all the time, and it's absolutely fundamental. Trading is a risk management business. It's a psychological business. It's not all this stuff, you know, you know, charts and um, green arrows, red arrows, lines, moving averages, stochastics. It's all about you. It's all about you, Mr. Trader, uh, Mrs. Trader, Miss Trader, Master Trader. It's all about you. 
understanding yourself, understanding the psychology of winning and losing, accepting that you lose a lot because that's what this business is and uh, just get it in your head and just have a system, trade your system, accept your losers, bag your winners, rinse and repeat. Uh, and, you know, and but the time frame is is important. Uh, obviously, markets do certain things at certain times, and other th- uh, certain indicators of uh, a lot of popularity. Others don't. But you, you know, some people don't trade with indicators at all. They're pure price action traders. Uh, some people trade right at the other extreme. They're completely fundamental. They're just waiting for major news, and uh, you know they trade you know accordingly. But it's all about um, uh, trading the time frame. Uh, that fits you and your personality, whether you're trading a, an automated system or whether you're trading it manually, whether you're trading on five minutes or, you know, the weekly time frames. It doesn't matter. Uh, it's all about you. And we'll come on to that as well in a minute. Um, uh, OK, uh, Tony's just saying here uh, he's in Nigeria. Hello. Um, good afternoon to you, sir. Um uh, crypto trade. What do you think about China and the United States of America trade? What has to do with this current epidemic? I saw news today as US blamed China for the virus. Well, yes. I mean, both sides have, uh, have blamed each other, and it got quite uh, got quite nasty. The Chinese uh, came out and said, "Well, it was the American army that brought it to China," which seems a bit far fetched, doesn't it? But you know, who knows? Uh, and obviously, Americans. And again, this is part of the the problem with that the markets had with the the US administration uh, response to the crisis was that the, uh, the, 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 tr- the president quite kept deliberately uh, kept calling it the Chinese crisis. That obviously had some very major impacts for some, obviously the Asian community in the United States in particular and, and around the world, uh, or, or the Wuhan crisis or the Wuhan pandemic. Uh, the World Health Organization have categorically sort of said, it's not that, you know, <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's COVID-19. Um, uh, and you know it, it appears to have started in Wuhan. You know where and how, it, whether it was from animals or transmitted to humans. Uh, still, nobody knows really. Uh, let's be honest. Uh, uh, and there's all sorts of other theories flowing around. But obviously, this came as Tony's just said. Let's put Tony's question back up. This came just after the Americans and the Chinese had signed and agreed this fa- phase one. Uh, part of their trade deal, which seemed to be moving forward. Uh, but the tensions were still there. It was only a phase one deal. Uh, the situation with Huawei was still a very, very uh, hot and thorny topic. The, uh, the UK uh, agreed to use Huawei within their G5 rollout, although not in the core of the G5. That really you know, upset the Americans. It really upset some of the very uh, hawkish uh, 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 Chinese um, uh, um, uh, 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 representatives in the American administration and, and uh, in the American Congress as well. So that's still ongoing, but it's in neither, it's in both parties' interest to get this deal going because trade is is is, is good still. What what Trump was trying to do, quite understandably, he was trying to level the playing field, as he called it. And, you know, the Chinese had had uh, they'd grown incredibly rapidly, very, very quickly over the last 20 or 30 years. Uh, and uh, in simplistic terms, t- Trump was saying it's it's impacting American jobs. American factories are leaving the US. He's going to bring it all back. That was all part of his mantra to get elected. Uh, and so uh, um, – excuse me. Uh, he put all these tariffs on. Uh, I mean, ironically, the tariffs, again, although the, you know, the US – T- uh, tariffing the imports. It's the U.S. consumer that ultimately pays it. The U.S. Um, importing company passes on to the U.S. consumer. So it, ultimately, it's the U.S. man in the street that ends up paying for it, even though the government is recu- recouping lots and lots of tariffs, and it makes a great political statement. And so it, you know, it was affecting. It was grinding down the steel industry where it first started. The steel and aluminium industry in the U.S. was slowing. You know, it, it, it was having a big, Im- a significant impact. Uh, so. They were moving forward. Uh, the deal with uh, Mexico and Canada was had just been ratified. That uh, the new uh, NAFTA deal that was going to be a big uh, positive trade uh, for the United States, as, as uh, again as Mr. Trump was uh, spinning it. So again, that sort of ground to a halt simply because of the obviously the the lockdown and uh, the lack of uh, uh, transport of people. Obviously, freight is still take crossing the borders uh, between Canada and the US and Mexico. Uh, but it's obviously very, very much 
reduced because demand is very, very much down. So, and some key industries are suffering very, very significantly. So, uh, w- is it related? Who knows, Tony? Nobody really knows, but it's obviously had an impact and it will need to be restarted again. Like in the UK, the impact on the, the Brexit negotiations between the UK and the EU are inevitably uh, going to be uh, impacted. At the moment, um, Mr. Johnson, who's still recovering, he's in sixth, fifth or sixth day of um, uh, having tested positive for the coronavirus, but still leading the UK government, is still adamant that the UK will get a trade deal by the 31st of December. What that trade deal looks like now uh, is, you know, it was always it was always a very, very tight timescale and, and, and sceptics were very uh, sceptical of it actually being worth the paper it was written on, some of them were saying. Uh, and obviously now time has disappeared, you know, and it's going to, you know, governments, as I said before, governments, institutions are now much more focused on looking after their people and dealing with this crisis and negotiating trade deals. So that inevitably, if there is something agreed by the end of December, uh, it'd be very, in my view, it'd be quite uh, quite weak. Uh, it's likely it'd be extended, but he doesn't like extending that. So he might just sign something and then, you know, add to it as it goes on. So anyway, all of this is, uh, of, of that particular issue pressures Sterling going forward, obviously. So, uh, but anyway, uh, that, well, we'll have a look at some of these uh, things as well. The news has come out whilst I've been blethering on. Uh, so let's have a look. So uh, actually, this should be able to, yeah, there we go. We should be able to see that. Uh, hopefully you can see that. Um, uh, there we go. So the news has broke. There we go. Much, much worse than expected. 6.6 million. Look at this. Can you see this, guys? 6.6 million initial jobs claims. Huge, huge number. Remember last month, last week, it was 3.3 million. It's actually been reduced a bit, uh, to be honest, uh, but that's a, a huge, huge number, 6.6 million. I imagine the markets are all over the place. Uh, they were expecting, you know, Goldman Sachs came out this morning saying uh, up to uh, 6 million, but it's more than that. It's much, much worse. Trade balance is actually better than expected, ironically. Uh, but continuing claims, 3 million uh, from last week. Um um, actually better than expected, but big. That's some. Uh, that's a huge, huge number. Um, and that brings the average, the uh, four-week moving average, all the way up to 2.6 million. Uh, massive, massive number. So we'll, uh, that might be a good time to uh, have a look at the markets themselves. So that's uh, is that last of my slides. I think it is actually. Uh, yeah, I was just finishing with the VIX. So and some other. Uh, webinars. Remember, we've got these webinars uh, three times a week, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursday. Uh, uh, next, uh, th- well, this month, we're going to going through, uh, I've got a book somewhere up here. I can't remember. I can't see it behind me somewhere. There it is. It's at the top. I don't know if you can see it. It's, at the, it's on the top shelf. Uh, Kathy Lynn's um, uh, day trading book. Uh, some really good strategies in there. We're just going to uh, 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 go through a few of them. Andrea went through uh, some uh, fundamental strategies uh, yesterday. Uh, on Tuesday, she's going to go through uh, next Wednesday, next week. She's going to go through three others: uh, the fader and the waiting for the deal strategy, and the uh, the double zero uh, strategy uh, next week. Uh, Otto on Thursday. This time next week, we'll be talking about um, uh, uh, best times to trade or times to trade. Not actually say the best times, but times to trade the forex market. I'll explain the the liquidity issues that uh, move around. Uh, live analysis webinar, uh, just purely looking at the charts uh, on the 14th. Uh, awesome oscillator, uh, advanced moving averages uh, into the end of the month, and uh, trailing stops, trend lines, hedging, double Bollinger Band. That's another Kathy Lynn uh, or one of Kathy Lynn's uh, strategies. Well, it's, actually, it's, it's in her book, uh, but it's it's not necessarily her strategy, <laughs> double Bollinger Bands. But uh, anyway, so. There we go. Uh, lots going on. So let's have a look at uh, the markets uh, with this. Um, whoops, where's me? Uh, this big move one would expect uh, to the downside. So these are the different strategies we talked about. So let's just uh, let's just take one. Um, let's see how the the dollar's gone. So we'll come back to these uh, in a minute, and we'll come to the charts you guys wanted me to have a look at. So. Um, Let's have a look intraday. Let's have a look at this. This is a default. It's a de- uh, bit of a default setting, uh, but huge uh, jobs claims numbers. Um, so it's Euro for our US oil gold. They're the only ones uh, people have asked for so far. And end of day trade. I'll come to that in a minute as well for you, Ben, as well. So uh, let's just have a look at the, uh, the dollar. So 
uh, dollar crosses. So euro here has uh, continued to decline, uh, even though that was a major uh, blip uh, for the US economy. So here euro is continued. This is um, the lines here, the day, the day breaks. This is a one hour um, time frame. And uh, we'll continue to move down. So we're testing 109 again uh, here on this one hour time frame. And so then it dipped down, we sort of bounced a wee bit with that uh, very weak number. Uh, but we've been down under 109. The trend remains to the downside. Dollar yen, I would guess, has gone the other way as well. Yeah, dollar weakening significantly there into uh, 109 uh, on the break of that news. Uh, next uh, if that does break, one oh, sorry, 109, 107, I should say. Below there is uh, the S1 for the day. It sits at 106.75. And uh, resistance, if we get back over the pivot point here at 107.70 zone for um, the uh, dollar yen. Um, So let's just go through the ones, uh, guys, we're looking at. And, and actually, let's just look at Sterling as well while we're here. Uh, so Sterling um, had moved up uh, early to, for uh, some unknown reason today. Uh, I'm worried about the jobs numbers, uh, but it's come back down and continues um, to decline. So that seven, that uh, big unemployment number uh, continues to um, uh, sort of ripple through the markets. Um, obviously, there was some other uh, Canadian data as well. Um Six point six million. My word, that's a huge, huge number. Uh, my market might be anticipating it's it's got worse. I'm surprised the dollar hasn't weakened uh, more from, from that. But uh, certainly, uh, uh, sterling um, there. You know, trade what you see, not what you think. Uh, continues to move down. Uh, got to our one. Couldn't get to a one twenty four eighty five. That previous um, resistance level up there earlier uh, this lunchtime, and it's moved back down under R1, um, back to possibly 124 again, uh, which has been pivoting through for the last couple of days, uh, Sterling. So let's have a look at the, these actual particular requests that people have asked for. So um, um, who was it? I was asking for, um, there we go. Mm, sorry, I've lost your name, sir. Uh, Edwin, Edwin was asking about euro on the four-hour time frame. Okay, will it continue downwards? Well, Edwin, I, yes, <laughs> it looks like that, doesn't it? That's the 30-minute going down. Uh, that's the one minute. Looks like it's going down. And your time frame was the four-hour time frame. So that's uh, continuing to move down. That's moving down into this 109 level here on the four-hour. So here on the four-hour time frame, uh, we breached the key um, – Lots of lines on here because it's the it's the one hour setup as well, so it's obviously more focused. So there's uh, lots of detail on here. So <clears throat> it breached the uh, as a four hour trader, it breached this on this particular strategy. This is a trend following EMA crossing strategy where we have the blue line here, which is the nine period EMA. Uh, sorry, the five period EMA. The yellow line is the nine period EMA, and the twenty period is the middle line here, the Bollinger Band. So the strategy says you you go short when the five crosses from above to below the nine period EMA. So the blue line crosses under the yellow line. And then uh, you actually open your trade. That's your, that's your uh, sort of watch out what's going on. And then you uh, look to go short when we break the 20 period, which was there yesterday. Uh, no, that was the end of March. So uh, uh, two days ago or beginning of yesterday. And that's continued to, to move down. Your stop loss would have been back up here. You're trailing it down as we move down, uh, and that remains short. Uh, the other key thing here, this orient, this purple line here on this, this particular strategy is a higher time frame again. So it's gone under the 50 period moving average as well this morning, uh, moved down. So that would uh, perhaps encourage, um, would have brought in some extra uh, uh, short positions potentially because it's under the 50 period, four hour time frame. And now this current uh, hour, we're moving into a key psychological round number of 109 so if this breaches you can see you know the next support is back into this level here on this four hour time frame which takes you to this 108 uh 50 uh 50 level so another another sort of round number where we we stalled 
on the way up here. So if this breaks, another 50 pips is quite light, possible lightly as we move down. So yeah, the trend remains very much to the downside, Edwin, on the four hour time frame for Euro uh, dollar. Remember tomorrow, uh, we got an FP as well. Uh, this was a huge, huge number, 6.6 .6 million new jobs claims, uh, unemployment claims in the US. Uh, massive, massive number. Um, uh, so there we go. Uh, while he's asking about uh, oil, will it keep going down? We mentioned that earlier. So let's just have a look at um, uh, the oil market here. So let's just take this back to the daily time frame. So here, oil uh, had been drifting down. It sort of breached uh, this is the end of day. So this is your when you're talking about will it keep moving down? So there's a big sell off here uh, in January. Uh, it trended, trailed down. It looked like it might have been going back up, but it's stuck here at $54 uh, in the middle of February. Couldn't get over that. Remember, remember this big spike here, all the way to 65, uh, as the Americans and the uh, Iranians uh, were sort of, um, well, Soleimani was killed. Uh, the the uh, Iranians were threatened reprisals. Uh, it didn't happen, so we've uh, you know we've weakened, and then uh, the big move down was uh, OPEC falling out here as we gapped down, and then the pandemic gripped global markets, and we gapped down yet again. So here we sort of moved up on expectation of some sort of deal with OPEC. It didn't happen. We ran to fifty four dollars, and then we've moved down. And the last move uh, under this key twenty day moving average. If you're an end of day trader, which um, Ben was asking about before. So again, Ben, using this strategy on the end of day, you would still be short uh, the oil market from all the way back at the end of February. That's what trends do. They can run and run and run and run and run. Uh, there's no reason to have been out of this using this particular strategy on the end of day. You would have been short from the 24th of February. And the rules say you would still be short. You would have kept your positions open or added to your positions as, it, as it's moved down. Um, uh, certainly that, that, that big gap down wasn't, you know, that you could have got in there as we, you know, $30 and then we got to 20 $25. We didn't even hang around. It was smashed straight through $25. So that suggests, you know, that there may not be a resistance as we move back up potentially to $25. But at the moment we've ran, we've traded under $20. We've had all this news this week and last week uh, about weaker oil prices. Analysts are talking about $10 a barrel. We've had that news from early in the week of, uh, or just I think yesterday on Monday, uh, dollar US oil trading hands at $7 a barrel in the US itself, not in some uh, far remote flung uh, um, uh, um, oil producing state. It was in the US, in Texas for yet Texas oil. Uh, and so we continue to, to move down. So you'd still be short. Uh, and that's what trend followers do. The rules are for this strategy to get out is that the price needs to close back over the middle moving average, which is this yellow line, the nine period EMA. So you would close your short position once the price moved back and closed positively, you know, a good close, not just on it, but broke it uh, fairly strongly. Because uh, when these trends run, they can run and run. So again, you know, that's been short uh now and it's like mean, trends don't go on forever but we're now into our 30th day 29th day 30th day of this big move down uh no reason to get out of it at the moment um obviously lots of people perhaps had cashed in down here at 20 dollars. some people started trying to catch the bottom by the bottom they might have got stiped out they might uh certainly some big buyers uh the chinese are supposedly uh, replenishing some stocks but as i said earlier there's some big issues about where we're going to store store all this oil because we've got we got this perfect storm of collapsing demand because of the pandemic yes it will come back in, but it looks like 2020 is going to take at least until the third or fourth quarter possibly uh, for any sort of recovery to come back in the oil price and um uh, a massive supply. I mean, it's not just going to go away. Nobody's going to use it all up. So these these storage facilities that are full, where are they going to put all this production? So they, they need to stop producing or, or build some more storage facilities. But that all of that is depressing the oil price continues. So yes, the trend remains very much to the downside. There are some signs clearly of uh, a flaw here at this $20. See how we've tested it. So uh, that's definitely the flaw. But for, you know, for a intraday trader, uh, end of day trading, not you know, just looking at it as purely um, uh, mathematically, as, as a lot of the uh, uh, bots will do, a lot of the automated systems will do. For instance, if you're trading this, looking to, you'd only go long if you broke over, for instance, this, the 20 day moving average. That sits now at $26.40. 
sense. So it's a long way to go before that gets broken in any consistent manner. You might be, you know, waiting for the nine period EMA to close out, uh, to go long. Uh, obviously, most people trading this on the daily time frame that followed this strategy will be closing their short positions here for big old profit bagged. Uh, and again, that might have happened at the end of end of uh, um, uh, Tuesday because it's the end of the quarter. So, you know, nice, nice, nice profit for the uh, quarter. Look at that. Proper old trend. So, uh, but it can continue a little bit of a bounce today and it may continue down. Who knows? But the trend remains to the downside, uh, off -well my friend, certainly. Um, so that was uh, Euro 4-hour US oil. Gold was the next question. Who was asking about gold? Um, Uh, FX Home, FX Home. Um, I'm sure you're a real person, I'm not just a bot, but if you're a bot, I'll talk to you, <laughs> Mr. FX Home, whoever you are. Uh, and you're saying actual price of gold is around 1600. Yep, that's we're sort of pivoting around that 1600 level, we certainly are. So let's have a look at it. So the gold market, uh, there we go, gold, um, today, uh, this is the one hour time frame, uh, but if we just start the daily time frame you can see uh incredibly volatile another great example of volatility gold is uh you know one of the key um safe haven assets in the world people like holding it the reason we've had so much volatility and recently not just um during this big move down is the physical collapse or, or sorry the physical shortage of the physical bullion the physical gold lots of mines are shut down lots of smelters have been shut down because of the pandemic and there's a physical shortage of the uh gold uh commodity itself to fulfill the contracts and the deals uh that are actually uh, re that require it to be done so that has had a massive impact on the paper market as well the cfd market the derivative market the etf market uh, uh, for gold as well. So uh, lots of volatility in the gold market. But as far as technical moves in this particular um, asset concerned, let's just, again, just before that, we were trending up really nicely. We moved up all the way, 1,700 plus, and that was our high here uh, at the beginning of March. We, sh uh, we shed as panic uh, ensued, uh, and we fell and fell and fell and fell, and we rally, we moved all the way down to this under 1500 under the 200 day moving average looked like it was going to go further down put a pivot low in and turned around then aggressively bounced very significantly so floor was in got a bit of a fibonacci um, leg there potentially starting to form and then we rallied very quickly and here last week i think it was last tuesday wasn't it this time um we moved really aggressively as well all the way back up through 1600 and through this key simple last Fibonacci, that's not really uh, relevant anymore, but uh, that was just an example of that particular move. But yeah, 1600 now becomes key. So if I zoom this down to the time frame again, um, FX Home, I don't know what uh, time frame you're trading this. You might have actually put a question down here. Um, no, no. Uh, so there we go. That was that, that key level there. So if we zoom, if we trend, if we trail this down, we see we've been, sh that was short, then it went long. And now it's sort of staggering around, and that looks like it was going to go short. It's very, you know, it's volatile. It's held that uh, 50 position, which is the 1575. We drill, drill this down to the four-hour time frame. So that's our immediate. That's our last. That's that last Fibonacci move from that floor. This move down here during March. So we've retraced that, gobbled it up, and held the 61. But so we're holding 50. So that becomes a key support level now. 1575 is a key support level on that four-hour time frame looking to move back up. But again, it needs to break over this big psychological resistance, which we've got around 1600. So we've got 1600, uh, zero, zero is a big psychological resistance, might you say. Uh, that Fibonacci level sits just around there as well. So that $5 higher is also a big, thick resistance. So we need to break back up uh, the movement uh, here on the four hour. You'd want to be back to 1640 to start moving up. On the one hour time frame. You know, today we're capped, or we, the, the initial cap was the resistance at 1600, but we breached that uh, briefly with the uh, the news, the weak news out of the US. That's just, it will add to the, you know, you'd add to the higher time frame uh, 
uh, bid on gold, one would argue, could easily argue. So uh, again, we're trading between these two key Fibonacci levels uh, yesterday and today. The key news is out. Obviously, markets will uh, now look focus on the NFP number tomorrow. Uh, any more um, uh, news, obviously, surrounding the uh, COVID um, virus, because that's the real thing that's that's the real thing that's driving sentiment uh, going forward. And Fridays are typically quite volatile for gold. Uh, lots of uh, risk taken off the um, off the table the, for, the, for every Friday for the last uh, five six. Uh, uh, six, seven, eight weeks after as the COVID virus has continued to grip uh, the markets. Uh, so expect no difference tomorrow, potentially. Uh, we did have a very big up Friday one, but most of them have been um, equities losing money on the Friday and gold benefiting from it. But we'll see. Uh, you never don't, don't, you know, react, don't uh, predict, wait till things happening. So again, here with this strategy, it looks like it's broken out of a bit of a trend here, a bit of a uh, channel there. Big move up, but that might be just a simple intraday move uh, for the uh, news. So um, there we go. 1595 is a key uh, support level running through where those uh, fractal highs are. So, um, yeah, pressure to the upside short term for uh, gold daily. Yeah, it's still not quite clear. Needs to really breach this and close significantly over here today and then start testing this 1630 level to move out of this. Uh, restriction. Okay. Um, ben, uh, you you asked about the daily time frame. So, Ben, the 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 thing about uh, the daily time frame is, you know, the higher the time frame, they say, you know, the less, or they say, I say as well, uh, the less uh, stress in a sense because you're. Um, I'm not necessarily less stress, but uh, you, you're not interested in it. The noise of the day is just all captured within your candle. So um, it's not so much of a big deal, potentially. So, uh, you know, again, if you're an end of day trader, have a strategy, whatever it may be, like the ones I showed before, you know, uh, you know find one that fits your personality. I'm very much of a trend following sort of guy. If we look at these strategy comparisons here, there we go. These are just eight. I mean, there's hundreds of strategies, literally hundreds of strategies. These are just eight that we talk about on our in our webinars. Uh, this one, uh, and this is, happens to be at the one hour time frame. So this is the same asset. This is the euro, um, euro dollar, um, uh, the same asset. So let's just take this to the, uh, the, the the daily time frame you're talking about for all these different uh, markets. Oh, sorry, not different markets. Same market, uh, different technical setups with different rules about buying and selling and all the rest of it. So let's just go through them all, see what it's telling us daily. And that one's uh, daily. Okay. So this one, uh, the first one here is an end of day. This is the daily one. This is uh, using the um, the awesome oscillator, this indicator down here. And uh, the, it's got the RSI as another oscillator on there. So the blue line is a very simple 20 period. I think that's a 50 period moving average. Again, so here you'd look to be long when you're above the 50 period, look to be short when you're under it. Basically, lots of volatility there. But using the awesome oscillate in particular, you know, there's lots of different ways of trading it. And again, uh, I'll be talking about that in the webinar. Uh, and actually, you can't see it because Ben's uh, questions in the way. So I'm going to take your question down, Ben. And um, well, yeah, I'm over the top of it. But basically, if you're below the uh, zero line here, that tends to be you know a short position. If it, the the the, the, um, uh, the histogram's red, to be short, so you trend it down. That green, you could have closed it and then gone long there. Uh, you know, so that's all short there, and that all corresponds. All that area there corresponds to being under the 50 period moving average as well. There we go. We broke the zero. That sort of coincides with that that rally up there, doesn't it? So that was long. Then it went short. It's going short here. So that's the basic principle of trading that particular strategy. Okay, I won't go into the full detail. This is a different one. This is uh, this is a mean reverting system, uh, and this one uses the stochastic set of ten, six, and three, uh, and the Bollinger Band standard default Bollinger Band. And the theory here is uh, that once we took the first, you followed the Bollinger Band first. So we get to the extreme of the Bollinger Band. And it should bounce up. And see here, it, it went down. It didn't. So 
you, you have to wait for a touch of the extreme of the Bollinger Band, either the, uh, the lower or the upper, and then wait for a cross in the uh, stochastic, uh, st the stochastics to cross. So there, for instance, I don't know if you can see that. So that there, you know, we got that would have been, it's, it's touched here, but we, we, we have the, sorry, at this point here, you can see that the, the candle has touched the outside of the Bollinger Band, but the down here, the Bollinger Band, uh, sorry, the stochastic uh, lines, the K and the D line, haven't actually crossed. So they cross up about here. So you would have gone long here, there, where that the blue comes out of oversold and crosses just above the red line. So you'd have gone long there. And it's gone against you because your stop loss would have been there. So you'd be stopped out on that one. But then you would have gone long again there because we've touched the outside of the line again to go long. It then crosses there, and you would have got in there and rallies and got that that move there to the midline. That's your first target. And then your second target is the outer Bollinger Band, but that didn't get there. You didn't get to your target two before it started moving down. Uh, it's crossed again there, but we haven't touched the outside, so we're not short. So our long uh, position hit target one, didn't hit target two. And so again, we just about – and then we touch here, there, and then it crosses there. So we go long here. That's target one. Again, didn't get to target two, but gone back down again and looking to go long at that point. But we didn't cross all the way until there. That one, that goes to take there. So that's the principle of that one. I am saying I've got time to go through more. But have a have a strategy and, and follow your strategy, basically. Well, whatever time frame it is you trade. But you trade the, to the key thing is to trade the time frame that you're trading. This one is a you know favorite of mine, the uh, Heiken Ashi Candles. This is that one. This is the crossing EMA strategy here that we talked about before. That's the one we've just been looking at. Uh, this is an end of day strategy. This one. Uh, this has got the 200 period, the 50 period, and again the Bollinger Bands with the 20 period. That's much more of a, a trend following strategy. Um, this one here is uh, using um, RSI and something called MFI, which is another oscillator. Uh, but again, uh, the, this one is the double Bollinger Band theory. That's what we've got here. We've got the uh, uh, the standard Bollinger Bands, the big fat green lines, and the uh, uh, a second uh, Bollinger Band theory. So this is the double Bollinger Band theory. The theory here be, being once we're into this over the uh, this uh, the first dotted line, we're looking to go long, uh, and when we're in the bottom here, looking to go short. And again, you can trade the extremes crossing. Uh, there as well. So again, that's another strategy which we, we spend a whole hour talking about that in our double Bollinger Band webinar as well. So lots and lots of strategies, not just the ones we teach, but all out on the internet. Uh, uh, but it, it, that isn't the point. The point is uh, your psychology, your 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 uh, plan, your mindset, uh, and um, you know how you analyze the market, how you take your trades, how you manage your stop losses, how you manage your take profits, uh, and then all the basic stuff about margin, leverage, uh, and lot size, all that other good stuff we talked about before. So uh, there we go. Uh, very, very uh, a significant day today, that huge uh, new unemployment claims. Uh, Tony's asking, what do you think? Uh, right, we've got some more here. Tony's asking about uh, Aussie uh, Swiss franc and the S&P 500. Okay, uh, let's just go back to our... Um, uh, our uh, setup. So let me just have a look at the Aussie, Aussie Swiss. I guess I don't know what time frame you're talking about. Um, Aussie, Aussie, Aussie Swiss. It's here. Uh, that's oops. Uh, so, around. Wonder why. This is the uh, monthly time frame. Uh, nobody. Well, I mean, let's use this as an example. Clearly, <laughs> uh, you know, that's the monthly time frame. It's been going down for seven years, hasn't it? This is the Aussie Swiss on the monthly time frame, and it's been down. It's been under its 20 period moving average since. Um, uh, where's this? This is uh, April, uh, February 2018. So for last two years, it's been short if you're a you know monthly trader. <laughs> and it's got very, very short in the last three months, uh, last four months. Look at that for 2020. It's got particularly weak. Anyway, nobody uh, trades up with those time frames. Look at the weekly. Big old fall. And the daily continues to fall. So new lows here. Uh, big extended fall beyond this uh, or beyond the an Fibonacci extension level. I don't know what that, where that was. Let's just zoom that in. Uh, I'll zoom that out, I should say. Is that a weekly one? Where's that from? That's that. Is it a weekly? I don't know what this is all about. Um, 
that was that weekly move. And yeah, it's look at that it moved all the way to that mass, massive, massive move down. I don't know what all those uh, trend line. Let me just tidy this up. Get a, So, uh, yeah, very uh, mood, uh, daily, um, still very weak. We've been oversold here, or had been, uh, during the middle and end of March, uh, Tony, but it remains very, very weak. But it's now clinging to this uh, 58, 50 level, or 59 level is the next level up. Um, but as you saw the initial chart, the trend, the weekly, the monthly, and the daily all remain in a downtrend. And again, it's one of the one of those charts. The uh, the daily moved down very aggressively. Uh, looks like it's moved up here from about the 17th, 18th of uh, January, but it's been a very shallow recovery from this sort of big move down. And we're still struggling to break the 20-day moving average. It's having a go. But as you can see, we're still trending down. We're still aligned. The moving average is aligned. The gold 200 period is all the way up there. The 50s there, and we're just about testing the 20 at the moment. But it just can't. We can't break it. Uh, we've tested it one, two, three, four, five days now. Uh, it's looking more likely, um, but uh, it may be. You know, that's what you'd like that to break. That 58 or 59 really is the key line. I would I would argue now. This fit this ex. Fibonacci extension level break 59 it might have some impact but as you can see here the signal lines broken out of the so we're looking at, it's starting to move up here on the MACD uh, the RSI has moved out of oversold but still remains very weak at 38 uh, that's the only indicators I've got on here really fractal low fractal high there that's our next uh, resistance the top of those candles through there through there at 59 uh, 50. So 59 and 59, 50 are our immediate resistance. And then the 50 period sits up there at 61, 60, uh, Tony. So it remains uh, weak to the downside. Um, uh, let's have a look. Oh, so you actually asking things now. And the S&P 500. So the S&P 500, again, uh, another one of those um, markets. Um, so look at on the this particular setup. So this is the daily setup with a 20, 50, and the 200-day moving averages on it with uh, the with the parabolic SARS and the fractal uh, arrowheads on them. So S and P 500. Uh, side, we'll have a look at the, the, some of these, but I've been talking for an hour and a half now, so I'm getting a bit a uh, bit hoarse. So I'll uh, I'll run through uh, David. Uh, Said and uh, I'll call it a day if you don't mind. After I've done your side, you wanted pound Oz and yeah, pound Oz on the hourly as well. So we'll have a look at David's pound Swiss. Actually, they're both pound ones. So we'll have a look at these two pound ones after Tony's S and P five hundred. Then, if you don't mind, guys, I'll uh, call it a day. But thank you for your time. I do appreciate it. Seventy three minutes I've been talking, so it's far too long. <laughs> uh, where were we? Um, S and P five hundred. Uh, sorry, USA five hundred. So. Um, Again, daily time frame, key, key, key. So bit, again, another one as a trend following um, uh, trader. Big day here was the 24th of February. I've said this many, many times uh, during March. It was the key day. We broke the 20 period. Still grinding up. We ground up, ground up. But that was a big in, uh, That was a big heads up. Mm, mm. Broke the 50-day moving average for the first time in ages. See this blue line? We hadn't broken it for yonks. Look at this. So that's why it was so significant all the way back here into uh, beginning of October. Uh, so that was a sign that was worth a short just from the sheer fact it broke the 50 day moving average. It broke it significantly. See the size of the candle? It broke it significantly. Uh, and then it was just added to as we moved down under 3,000. Anyway, uh, enough of that. We've moved down. We're now, again, another 30 days under the 20 period moving average because uh, we broke it on the same day as the 50. And we just collapsed. Gap there. Uh, move down, move down, uh, 22. And the low we put in on the S&P was here on the uh, the 23rd of March. This is what I was talking about last week, about these massive moves, these 9%, 12% falls. Uh, sorry, 9% falls and then 12% bounces. So here, the 23rd of March, our current low here at 2,200, basically, uh, for the sake of a few points. So 2,200, uh, massive, massive low. This takes us all the way back to the day that, uh, or the, you know, January 2017, when Trump became uh, US president uh, or was inaugurated. Uh, and um, uh, so all that gain 
uh, in the equity market has all been wiped out in the space of a, a few weeks. Uh, obviously, trying to recover and recovered quite significantly last week. So two, three, two big strong up days, uh, and then we've shaken out. But for me, uh, Tony and all the other for equity traders, look at this. This is the key thing. I'm pointing this out again to the guys this morning. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six days now. The 20 day, that key, key, that like key, key indicator, the 20 day moving average hasn't been breached and broken. It's been touched. We haven't broke it. We haven't closed above it. And it certainly hasn't been breached. It looked pretty good here on uh, on Monday as we closed, came to the end of the month uh, that we were might moving up earlier on, but no, didn't. And then yesterday we sold off, selling off today. So it may be, you know, the first few days of the month setting for a new position. Is this, you know, dead cat bounce? Is it a retrace before we move down again? Or is it is the floor down here at 2,200? Only time will tell. It may be as the president, as I said before, as the president's got serious, you know, markets might think, all right, right, they are going to deal with this. Yes, unfortunately, lots and lots of US citizens are going to die. Uh, but, um, you know, uh, we may have put a floor in the finance, in it for the financial market. So uh, who knows? But at the moment, it remains to the short to the downside uh, S&P 500. Uh, right. Two final things. Um, Enoch, hello, my friend. How are you? Hope you're well. Hope you're keeping well. Uh, you and your family. I'm assuming it's e my, my mate Enoch. I don't know many Enochs. I'm sure it's Enoch, Enoch. Uh, my friend from Kenya. Hope you're well, sir. Family well, I hope. And uh, staying safe and away from strangers, away from people. Uh, horrible, horrible virus. Um, Said, uh, pound Oz on the one hour time frame. Uh, before that was David asking for the pound Swissy. Um, uh, you haven't put a time frame in here, David, but uh, well, let's look at the pound. So we finish with these two sterling crosses, and then I will need to go and switch off, call it a day. Uh, sterling, pound, Swiss. Uh, where's the other one? Uh, pound, Swiss. Uh, so let's have a look. So pound, Swiss. Well, that's an uptrend, you know, on the one hour time frame. Um, David, uh, again, supported by the 20 period and, and more importantly, supported by the 50 period. So dip, the, that's the blue line is the 50 period. Uh, gold line is the 200 period. And the 20 period is the, uh, the middle line of the Bollinger Band is the uh, 20 period. So nicely aligned, moving averages continues to move. Are higher, the lows are getting higher. The highs are getting higher. Classic Dow theory. So off we go. Where have we rallied? Well, we've gone through now 120. Uh, that's been our key uh, here today. 120 is there, around about there. See how that resistance going down off it, broken up. up. So 120 has been breached so far today, so it remains fairly strong. We've had a weak Swiss franc today. Certainly it was uh, um, a big mover down this morning, nearly 1% against the Canadian dollar. Uh, and uh, so 120.50 has been tested. We may be running out of steam up here on the one-hour time frame. Four-hour probably remains well bid. There we go. Interestingly, there we go. Four hour, look at that. That's the 200 period coming down. So trending, we're back to that. So that's a key, key level 120 for pound Swiss traders, David. I don't know what time frame you're trading, but again, as a four hour trader, you've been, again, just using this crossing, using the 20 period is the main, your main pivot. You've been long there from the uh, 24th of March. And that's continued. You got an extra uh, bite. Um, later the next day as we breach the 25, uh, sorry, the 50 period moving average and the key 115.65 uh, period from this area there. But that was support. That was resistance going up and then we've breached it and moved up. Then we've gone through 116.80, which is this previous high here, those candles there, and then it's continued to rally there. That's been a nice old trend. Pound against the Swissy on the four hour. Now we're over 120. Have we got over? Have we got overbought? Well, not quite yet. RSI is still at 64 or 68. So there's still some legs in that. Uh, interestingly, that the the momentum here, the MACD has flattened out. The signal line is flattened out and seems to be rolling over. The uh, histogram uh, is uh, flattening. There you go. So we, the emphasis, the momentum's rallied, but it's still holding there. There's no no reason to get out, but you know, if we hold the 200 period, that would be very, very key. Uh, and as we go up again, the daily time frame may have triggered. There we go. Daily time frame uh, went above its 20 period moving average uh, here on the 27th. So one hour, first four hour, and now the daily has moved up. 
that's that key resistance, that 200 period on the four hour we talked about where we are now at one two, uh, 120. And then on the daily time frame, the 50 period is our next resistance, which sits there at 121.33. So the trend remains to the upside uh, for pound Swissy. Uh, depending on the time frame we trade it, obviously, uh, but uh, moved up from a big move down. Um, that's what trends do. They go on and on and on. Enoch, yes, it's me. Well, I hope you're well, sir. Do, do take care. <laughs> Tulo's here as well. Oh, my mates are here. This is very good. Tulo. Hello, sir. Uh, you could do this, Tulo. I'm sure you do, sir. Uh, it's about time we did a webinar together again. Have a word, okay? <laughs> Take care, my friend. You stay safe, Tulu. Uh, and finally, for today, Saeed uh, 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 has asked about the pound Aussie. So, pound, finish with the pound Aussie today. Uh, on the hourly chart. So here we are. This is the hourly chart. So what's going on? Um, well, we're long again, you know, or it is long. You know, it's been fairly pokey here. Uh, 31st, held, held, dipped, held again yesterday. Whoa, we'd probably, you know, you've definitely <laughs> stopped out there with that volatility uh, yesterday. But interestingly, see what happened. Huge volatility into the hour. But the candle still closed above the 20 period moving average. So, uh, you know, you'll probably, I mean, if you'd been long there, you'd have been stopped out and lost all of that. But that's just trading for you. But, you know, if you've been brave, you know, you're still there. You're back over the 20 period, consolidated overnight and into this morning. And then we got some life. Sterling's come back to life today. Aussie's weakened. Uh, we consolidate. There we go. That's why the pivot points work so well today. 2.03. Again, another one way over two now. Two's there. So that's held the pivot. We've ran to R1 already today. So is there any more legs in it? Well, you know, R1's a pretty strong uh, target. To get to R2, um, I think it's about 14% of the time we get to R2 during the day. So 2.0718 is R2 now. And I wonder why that line's in there. Why is that line in there? So it's from some other time frame. I don't know. Should we have a look? Um, ah, there we go. It's that, that R2 was that spike here. Uh, from when we got really spiky here on the 9th of March. So that's, that's there we go, that line is coming into play. And uh, the other line here, 2.08, I remember talking about this uh, earlier on in the week, didn't I, or wherever we were, uh, just shy of R3, 2.03. And R3, guys, R3 only gets hit about 4% of the time. So uh, a big move if we get to R3 during the day. So uh, as far as, um, it was an hour time frame, wasn't it, Saeed? Um, yeah, that remains relatively well bid. Uh, we've had a strong candle now. Remember what we say about um, uh, uh, candles, the size of the body really, really matters. Even with this one, big wick, you know, it still drifted down, but it took all those hours to go down. But it didn't break under the uh, the pivot point, the 50 period held, the one hour then when it moved up. So we had a strong candle now. So whether we're going to go for the rest of the day, it's 4.30 uh, server time, it's 2.30 uh, in London, it's uh, you know, so it's 13:30 uh, GMT. So the Americans, are, um, the market, cash markets are just opening up in America. But this is the pound Oz. You know, it's not a, it's, you know, it's not a key currency that's traded by the Americans, but it's still a currency that trades and moves. Uh, so um, there we go. The, the obviously sterling traders are around. Aussie traders are tucked up in bed, I guess, for an hour or going to bed. Uh, so uh, yeah, strong move. If it holds over here. Uh, that's a strong because it's broken out of this little channel here and that's moved up. So uh, there we go. That's our two next levels, these spikes from those daily spikes we saw earlier in the week. And that was really, I think we talked about this, didn't we? Uh, was it with you, Saeed? I can't remember, but lots and lots of action here. Look at these Look at these uh, wicks. I don't mean you see that on the back, black background here, but lots and lots of wick action there. So uh, claim 6.648 million people in the United States filed for new jobless claims in this week. In this la last week, it was 3.2 million. The record before this, before last week, was 600, less than 700,000. And that was massive. And that took place in uh, October 1983. So here we are, you know, 30 plus year, 35 year, 36, seven year, uh, 37 year records being broken last week, and then it was broken again this week. This is a, a fundamental uh, once in a generation type of move that's going on here. So, you know, be very, very careful when you're trading these sort of things, but there's opportunities around here. Uh, but as ever, it's always, always, always about risk management. So that's a huge number. 
uh, tomorrow. We've got factory orders later on as well uh, at uh, five o'clock in half an hour. So watch that as well. That could be uh, pretty pokey as well. Uh, but uh, obviously tomorrow is the key event. We'll be doing this again tomorrow, not on YouTube, but on Facebook. So uh, join us tomorrow live on YouTube on uh, our Facebook page. Uh, for the uh, what is typically uh, the most volatile event of the month, but who knows uh, in the well in these very very uh, unique times. So average hourly earnings three percent expectations, a, a dip of one thousand uh, one hundred thousand uh, new jobs, so a negative decline. It's going to be potentially much much bigger than that. Uh, remember, Goldman Sachs was saying this morning they upped their expectations for today. Uh, to 6 million and it even beat that from five and a bit million. The consensus for today uh, was this three and a half million. So it's you know, nearly twice as big. Huge, huge number of unemployed or new claims being filed in the United States. This is a massive impact. And this, to, again, too early to say it's the bottom, but it's going to get potentially worse uh, as we move forward. I don't know if you can hear my one of my dogs barking out there on my microphone, but... Uh, Stephen Labrador is having a bark at somebody, so uh, it might be time for his walk. So I do need to go. Stephen's barking. Uh, so thank you for your time, everybody. Uh, I really do appreciate it. Uh, and uh, we'll see you all again uh, soon. It's a motorbike. I don't think you need a motorbike. He doesn't like motorbikes either. So um, let's just get rid of mm, – actually, let's get rid of uh, that one. Let's get rid of that. We need to show you that and get rid of me. So take care, everyone. And uh, we'll see you all tomorrow uh, for NFP. So trade carefully and.